Welcome into this week's episode of Jacket Sports Weekly. The baseball team able to open up PAC with a three-game sweep over Geneva. A historic victory for the baseball team in the first game against Geneva. The softball team has not started PAC play yet. Looking to find themselves are the girls on the softball team. And Emily Bennett will sit down with Mike Trax later on in the show. I'm Jack Hillgrove. And I'm Hugh O'Neill, and you're watching Jacket Sports Weekly. The baseball team had an historic win over the Geneva Golden Tornadoes this past week, 23-2 to in Game 1, and in Game 2 and 3 were able to handle them as well, 8-1 and 10-6. Game 3 was a little bit scary, but six runs in the top of the ninth inning to win. The baseball team, uh, you know, Geneva's not that great of a squad, but you can't discredit what Waynesburg did in those three games. I mean, yeah, when you put 23 runs in one game, that just says numbers, and when you go along with that, with the pitching, over the entire series with Mason Miller and Ty Wickline, there's not many negatives you can look at from that pitching standpoint, and putting up all those runs, 23 runs, 8 runs, and 10 runs, that's over 30, 35 runs in three games, and you can't really complain about that, and that's because everyone has collab collaborating and just putting in great offensive numbers. Yeah, you talk about Ty Wickline and Mason Miller, Mason Miller in his start in the 23-2 outing. Six innings, one walk, six Ks. Has an ERA of .45 in his three starts this year. And in the 8-1 game, Ty Wickline had a complete game, only seven innings. Uh, two, ba two base on balls, zero earned runs, seven innings pitched, seven strikeouts. Uh, this pitching has been spectacular for the Waynesburg baseball team thus far. And you can just hear, uh, you know, think of the offensive efforts. 23 runs, eight runs, 10 runs, as you mentioned, that's... Uh, that'll win you a lot of games, especially in the PAC for baseball. Um, and just to highlight, in the 23-2 game, Mitch Nordstrom was 2-for-2. Two two. He walked three times. Justin Buborow had three RBIs, and Tyler Godwin went 2-for-3 with three RBIs as well. So from an overall standpoint, on the mound, in the batter's box, that series for Waynesburg might have been its best in recent years. Yeah, Waynesburg has over eight players batting over 300. And switching to the pitching side of the game, Ty Wickline is 2-1. and one. He's a 1.56 ERA. You mentioned Mason Miller with a .45. Wickline and Miller, through 37 innings, have only allowed four earned runs. Miller only allowing one. And that just shows numbers that this team could be it with the pitching. We, we'll get into the softball later how they don't have the pitching, but right now Waynesburg has the pitching and the hitting now only against Geneva and PAC play. We'll see the true test against W&J, which we will get to with Mitch Montani here in just a bit, but that's a great start for PAC play for Waynesburg. Yeah, and you know, talking about this baseball team a couple weeks ago, Hugh, before the season started when we previewed uh, the baseball team season, the key for me was Mason Miller and how successful he was going to be. You know, in his first two years in the orange and black, you saw, you know, the, the size, the speed on his fastball, the potential that he had. And he just wasn't able to do so with his, you know, his lack of control and just being able to, um, you know, not being uh, mentally be there. This year, uh, you know, he's really sort of come into his own and just blowing his fastball by every opponent that he's faced. Um, you know, six innings, seven innings, seven innings, and three of his starts. One earned run in those starts, and that's just outstanding. I mean, you can't speak enough on well, how, what Mason Miller has done for this team. And again, like we mentioned, you know, if he gets to go in one of the W and J games, you know, it's going to be a test for him. And the rest of this conference season is going to be a test for him. But the way he's pitched now. There's no question as to say, you know, he could be one of the best starting pitchers in all the pack this year. And we're also seeing that next man up mentality with freshmen such as Luke Winterbottom and sophomore Brandon Durbin. And we saw them mainly in that third game against Geneva able to really put the Yellow Jackets ahead with both having two RBIs in the past in the, in the last few innings, which was good. But speaking of few RBIs, we're going to switch to softball. And softball, not 
not many RBIs, no. not, not scoring many runs, losing to Franciscan eight to two in game one and six to three in game two. Waynesburg was supposed to have six games this week. This past week only had two based on weather. So coming fresh, looking to start PAC play towards the end of this week, but not what the team was looking for to start. No, in the 8-2 loss of the first half of the doubleheader, they only had three hits. Emma Kubalak started the game. She had four walks and only two strikeouts. So that's not um, and, uh, giving up eight runs. And the lack of pitching is, is the story of the softball team. Emma Kubalak, you know, went both games. She started and had four walks in game one and then went six innings the next game and uh, lost. She had six earned runs. 56 innings pitched for Emma Kubalak this year, 5.88 ERA. And uh, also in that second game, switching back to the offensive side, the only extra base hit was a double from Courtney Seifert, only her second of the year in 14 games. So this offense, um, and you can look at this team with a lot of, a lot of issues, not a whole lot of help from the pitching staff, and this offense has not lived up to expectation in the first uh, 14 games of the season. But, you know, the good news is, is there is no conference play yet, and, uh, you know, at this stage of the season, this is what matters the most when you talk about playoff implications. But, again, Hugh, if they want to, if they think that they can make the playoffs and a lot of the girls on the team think they can, the offense has to step up. Yeah, none of these games really matter for playoff contention. The games that will really count will start at the end of this week. And it's tough when you have a pitcher like Kublak who allowed eight runs, but only four of them were earned. When the offense isn't clicking and not getting that many runs, the defense has to play stellar. And you can't have four unearned runs. That's just unacceptable if you're only going to get two, two runs in. So both sides have to click and really at the same time because if you have bad defense, the offense is really going to have to step it up, and we're just not seeing that. Yeah, and it's a mental standpoint. You know, Obviously, the players that are playing defense for you are going to come in uh, after the inning's over and try and um, do something for you on offense. And if the errors are coming through, like you mentioned, eight runs but only four of them were earned, that equates to a little bit of you know error issues. So this team has to um, get their get their things together for the conference play. But for now, we will step aside. When we come back here on Jacket Sports Weekly, we'll stick with baseball. Mitch Montani will preview the upcoming matchup against W&J. Don't go anywhere. Hello and welcome to The Journey, WCTV's only faith-based program. Over the course of this semester, we are going to walk with students through their daily lives and take a look at how faith impacts them. Please take a half hour, sit down, and relax with us as we go on a journey with students, staff, and residents of Waynesburg. At this stage in the season, the Waynesburg baseball team is in first place in the PAC at 3-0 in the early, early stage of the season. Big matchup this week against Washington and Jefferson. The Jackets have an in-studio to talk about it is Mitch Montani. Mitch, as we mentioned, Big matchup, a doubleheader against W&J. First game, seven innings. Second game, nine innings. Yeah, and it's going to be a big test for the Waynesburg University Yellow Jackets. They're coming off, again, that three-game sweep of Geneva. But if that three-game series told us anything, it's that, hey, Geneva's not very good. But the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets proved over those three games that they were indeed capable of handling a pretty bad team, and they did that and came out and won all three games against Geneva, which you expect a good team to do, come out there and beat the bad teams. But WNJ is going to be a tough contest. In the PAC preseason poll, there wasn't much discussion over who would be the number one seed when playoff time came around. It's going to be WNJ. So I think Waynesburg would find huge success in a split of this doubleheader coming up uh, in the middle part of this week. And a big part of how they're going to do that is going to be Mason Miller, the ace of this staff, far and away, 3-0 record, .45 ERA and 20 innings of work. And he had a workmanlike performance in that nine-inning game, the single game to start the three-game series against Geneva when he went six innings of shutout ball. Now, talk about W&J. Fast forward a little bit to the weekend against Bethany. What do you see for that? Well, that's going to be an easier opponent for the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets than W&J. I think you look at the three-game series against W&J and know that you have to win at least one and hope at the best-case scenario that you can win two. I'm a huge fan of this baseball team. I think they have a lot of chances to find success this year, and I think they are a playoff team when all is said and done. But realistically, a three-game sweep of W&J is just not going to happen. <laughs> They're way too good of a team. 
Bethany, I think that's a goal that Waynesburg can set. I think they can come out there and try to take all three games, but at the bare minimum, I think the Yellow Jackets know that they need to take at least two of three. Obviously, you mentioned Mason Miller and the doubleheader coming up with the Presidents. Are there any other players that stick out in your mind that you say, hey, this person also needs to step up if they want to at least split with the Presidents? Well, in terms of the hitting, I think the senior class needs to step up a little bit more. Here's what's funny. Tyler Reese is batting 333 with a homer and nine runs batted in, and I think he's capable of so much more. I think he knows that, too. He's such a good hitter when he's in the zone, and if he gets hot at the right point in time this season... He is going to be the best hitter in the President's Athletic Conference. Now, do you have faith in the bullpen against W&J? Say if Mason Miller goes, he goes strong. What happens after the starters like Ty Wickline are taken out? We'll see. It's going to be interesting to watch. I think the starting rotation is far and away the toughest part of this team. And if they can mold it together with Mason Miller and Ty Wickline and guys like Johnny Kutchman at the top, they'll have a good chance to win. Mitch, thank you very much. From the diamond to the circle, next on Jacket Sports Weekly, it's Dakota Kiefer breaking down the softball team. Don't go anywhere. My name is Corey Tretinick, and I'm here with this week's entertainment news. Remember, it's all of your beeswax. Welcome back here on Jacket Sports Weekly. Switching from baseball to softball, our softball expert, Dakota Kiefer, here in studio to talk about the softball team. Yeah, so the softball team currently sits at 4-10 and 10 on the season. They haven't played since the 20th. They were supposed to have four games uh, between Friday and Saturday of this past week, but those games got postponed due to the possibility of snow in the forecast and cold weather as well. But the softball team, I really want to harp on the fact, is pitching. It was pitching last year, and it's pitching this year. So Emma Kubalak has started 10 games, and Waynesburg has only played 14 games. She started both ends of a doubleheader, which is kind of crazy to me. I know softball, uh, it's a different throwing motion than what baseball is, so it's a little healthier on the arm. But at the same time, this team needs to figure it out because Courtney Messenger, in the games that she has pitched, she's been fantastic. She has a sub-2 ERA. Uh, 187 ERA to be um, as a fact, a matter of fact, and that's second in the PAC. So she's pitched very well in the four games that she has started. But Emma Kubalak, if she's going to kind of be that workhorse this year, she's going to have to figure it out a little bit. Her ERA of 562, that's not really going to cut it, especially going into PAC play. Now, what they have coming up next is Point Park, but those games, um, if we're being honest, they don't really matter. As If they're not PAC games, they don't matter. So I want to move on to Westminster, and Westminster is going to be a challenge for Waynesburg. Uh, they've struggled a little bit early on in the season, but uh, they were picked to finish second in the coaches poll, in the preseason coaches poll. Um, they were just six points behind St. Vincent in that coaches poll, and they're a really good team, and they have struggled a little bit offensively. But coming up against this Waynesburg pitching now, I, I do um, think that Courtney Messenger will pitch more when we move into PAC play, and that, that will be a good thing for Waynesburg, obviously. Uh, it's, it remains to be seen if she's going to be as dominant going against PAC opponents. But that's something to look forward to is the way that Courtney Messenger and Emma Kubalak split the duties. Because right now Emma Kubalak looks like Courtney Messenger did last year, starting 20 of the 34 games, Kubalak with 10 of the 14 games. I expect that to be split up, but Waynesburg is still going to struggle in the Westminster um, games because the pitching staff for Westminster is pretty good. And offensively, Waynesburg hasn't been that great either. They, they, have, they do have people at the top that are batting well over 300. In fact, um, they have people even batting over 400, and Dubovich is batting 441. But at the same time, they just haven't been that great. They haven't been able to bring pitching and uh, um, – offense together collectively and moving into PAC play that's going to be a key to them is to bring the pitching in the offense if Courtney Seifert she leads the team with six stolen bases but she doesn't get any extra base hits so there's a lot of there's a lot of keys to this team that do have talent but they're going to need to bring it all together going into PAC play thanks Dakota find out what will happen with that series for the softball team for over the past week. When we return, Alex Lyons will be here in studio to talk track and field here on Jacket Sports Weekly.
Welcome to Watch This, I'm Brennan Rossi. And I'm Chris Hulse. On this show, we look at all of the national movies and TV shows that are making shockwaves throughout the society. Join us as we review and preview Hollywood's best and worst. On Watch This. Welcome back in the studio for Jacket Sports Weekly. The track and field teams, both on the men and the women, on this past weekend head south to Morgantown, West Virginia for the WVU Open and in studio now to talk about it is Alex Lyons. And Alex, uh, both the men and the women had some success this weekend at West Virginia. Yeah, to no surprise, the women very successful. But the men, you really start, you're starting to see a good combination of veterans and f freshmen stepping up. When you look at their placers, you have two freshmen, multiple sophomore, a trio of juniors, and they've been really successful in the distance running for the men's. You see Nate Jesselin placing third in the 800, Jared Scott second in the 1500, and third in the 3000 for Matt Durgan. So really some success there in the long range thing. One winner coming out of WVU, and that's Matt Trax, who we'll interview later on in the show. Finishing first in the long jump, also placed third in the triple jump. So having some junior leaders like Matt Trax coming out with a good day, getting a win and a third place finish is a very good sign, especially when you see these younger runners and throwers joining into the party and mix for the Yellow Jackets. But on the women's side, no surprise, a number of first place finishers, including Tegan Simonson, first in the three thousand or first in the five thousand. Nicole Shelton was first in the three thousand. So you see a number of winners on the women's side, including getting a first in the four by four hundred relay. So they've been very successful coming into the WVU VU Open. Do you think the success is going to transition to next week at Bethany? For the women, I think it's a no doubter in my opinion because they've just been so successful for so long. You've seen multiple PAC championships out of this women's track team and it wouldn't be surprising if this is going to be a good start going into the Bethany Invitational to continue the success they found last week. For the men on the other hand, I think it's a little iffy because you have so many young athletes and runners and throwers placing a huge role for this Waynesburg's men's team, which is a big thing. This is how the women got good. They start off having some young runners come in and be a good mix of veteran leadership with the freshmen. And that's what I think the men are starting to do, but it's not going to be to as big as of an extent as the women had. So it's going to be very interesting to see if the men can find that same success and keep up with what we saw last week at WVU. But I think it should be an interesting season for the men's track team. And I think this is a team that's going to start finding their way like the women have in the past few years. Before we take a break, do you see, you talk about that mix of veteran with freshmen. Do you see at any point this season um, that the freshmen sort of come into their own for the men? I do. I think it's like anything. You get better with age and get better with experience. And once you get a little more experience under these freshmen, it wouldn't be surprised if there's some of your top performers each and every week. All right, Al, thank you very much. When we come back on Jacket Sports Weekly, Emily Bennett will be in the studio to sit down with Mike Trax. Don't go anywhere. Waynesburg's first film festival was a hit. Our own Emily Bennett has more. Senior electronic media major Megan Cook hosted the first film festival at Waynesburg University. Seven degrees outside with a small wind chill with flurries still falling down. Will it continue to snow though? Six others injured Monday night in a crash in New York City. Police say 70 year old man was attempting to parallel park his van in the company's history. In fact, the online retailer says from Thanksgiving to Cyber Monday, customers ordered a fee, but they did start the season at 4 1 and 2, missing a playoff was a disappointment for this team. Four consecutive losses to end the season, including a 9-0 loss. Welcome back to Jack of Sports Weekly. I'm Illy Bennett here with junior jumper Mike Trax. Thanks for joining me. So this past weekend, you won the long jump, got third in the triple jump. As we kind of start this, how do you really train for the long jump and the triple jump? Um, for long jump, you just want to do repetitive drills uh, working on your height and working out distance out, working on the landing. For triple jump, you have to work on each individual phase. That has three phases, so you just have to progress on each one as you start to get the hang of it. Now, what do you really need to improve on as the season progresses? Um, for long jump, just keeping my speed up and working on my explosiveness. For a triple jump, it would be holding each phase even longer to improve my distance each time. 
Now this season, what do you feel like you're doing really well to get your success? Um, probably maintaining my speed throughout the jump, which I really haven't done well in the past, but this year everything has came together and I've been doing really well with that. Now how do you, what do you feel are some of your, your strengths for the long jump and the triple jump? Uh, my strengths are the ability like, to have explosive jump and have that hang time. Most, either, you're either a fast jump or you have a hang time, and mine's more of a hang time. So that's pretty much my strength for both jumps. Now, what is a strength that you really need to have to kind of succeed in jumping? The strength to have is just having your body under control and having that focus. Because you, you can't have your body everywhere, and you'll lose, you lose your stride or lose your balance throughout the jumps. And you need to stay focused throughout the whole entire jump. Now, what are some of your goals um, this season and also for next season as well? Um, to win the pack again in the triple jump and to improve in the long jump. I also want to go and reach nationals. Uh, right now I'm ranked 10 nationally for long jump and I want to keep improving that and hopefully I stay in that spot. Now do you prefer the long jump or the triple jump and why? Uh, I prefer the triple jump. I started to get better at that one first this past week in long jump. I know I had it in me but I'm more consistent in the triple jump and it's kind of my thing now. Now how did you really get into jumping? Um, in high school I wanted to run track I also played basketball in high school, so I wanted to run track, get fast, or work on my jumps. And the track coach always talked to me, so I finally did it my junior year, and I loved it ever since of that. How have you really seen yourself improve from high school into college? I'm just, I just saw myself improve by just understanding the techniques a lot more and knowing that you can have one bad meet and still be able to perform well with a meet after that. Now, what's your favorite part of jumping? What really kind of motivates you to keep going? Um, just the atmosphere the team brings and the competitiveness. I like, I'm like. i a very competitive guy. Uh, I, like, I like the atmosphere it brings. Now what really goes through your mind? Like, Take me through your mind as you're going into a jump. Honestly, I really don't think about much or it will distract me. I just clear my mind and run as fast as I can and jump. And Whatever my coach tells me after that, I'll focus on that a little bit before I jump, but other than that, I clear my mind. Now kind of Tell me, what kind of brought you to Waynesburg, and what kind of brought you to that track and field team? Um, my high school coach had a input in the Waynesburg track program a while back, and then he said, I would do good here. I should uh, look into it. And it was close to home, so that was an another advantage for me. So that, that's why I came here. My old track coach, and it was close to home. Now, what, how, how has your adjustment been? Now, you are a junior in college. What was your adjustment being that uh, you know, collegiate athlete and still having to balance school? Um, the adjustment was hard. As a freshman, you know, you don't know how classes are going to go. And with getting in practice, too, and going to study tables if you need it. But after your first year and a half, you kind of have un everything under control, and you learn and you know what to expect from the years out. Now, what's your favorite memory that you've had from a track meet in college? Um, definitely winning the triple jump event in PAX. Um, it was one of my goals, and well, it was one of my goals to win at least one event, and to finally do it, especially this year, it's probably my favorite memory, and I hope to have more memories to come. Now, do you have anyone, I know this is kind of different with track, but someone you look, look up to in track? Um, I did my freshman year. He was a senior here as, my, as a freshman. Um, he was kind of like my guide and helped me through school and stay focused on track, but just talking to every teammate and the past experience and Having other coaches be there for you. I look up to a lot of the coaches on the track team previous years and this year. Now, what do you want to do? You know, you said your goals, but what is something that you want to leave here as kind of oh, that Waynesburg athlete? Um, that's a good question. I'm really not sure. Just uh, you know, you can do you can do both balance school and excel in a sport. You can excel in both, and I feel like that's a big part of it. Well, thanks for joining me, and good luck for the rest of the season. But when we come back, Hugh and Jack will have your Waynesburg University Top 5 Athletes of the Week right here on Jack of Sports Weekly. Hello, and welcome to The Journey, WCTV's only faith-based program. Over the course of this semester, we are going to walk with students through their daily lives and take a look at how faith impacts them. Please take a half hour, sit down, and relax with us as we go on a journey with students, staff, and residents of Waynesburg. 
We're just about ready to finish things off here on this episode of Jacket Sports Weekly. But first, it's time for our top five athletes of the week. Jack, how about you go ahead first? Sure. Number five. Uh, and as we mentioned, this baseball team all season long, uh, or the, in the series rather, tremendous performance. And number five, Justin Buberl. Three RBIs in the route of Geneva in game one. They won that one 23-2. Uh, it was the, most, the largest margin of victory of any team in the PAC this season. Number four, we switched to track. Amber Yock, the winner of the triple jump with a uh, jump of 10.33 meters. Number three, staying with track, Jordan Simpson. She won the javelin and had eighth place in the shot put at the WVU Open on Saturday. A tremendous performance from her. And back to baseball for number two and number one. Number two, then they're both pitchers. Ty Wickline, a complete game in game two against Geneva. No earned runs in seven Ks. And number one, Mason Miller. What can you say about his performance this season? Six strikeouts and no earned runs for his third start of the season. Very similar one and two, but I'll start out with my number five. Number five, Amber Yawk from the track and field team. First in the triple jump, able to see, we'll, we've seen what she has done last year into this year. Number four, Johnny Kutchman, did not talk about him yet this far this episode. Six for 13 with six RBI against Geneva in those three games. Most likely we'll see him on the mound against WJ on Tuesday. Number three, Mike Trax, who Emily Bennett just sat down with for the track team, first in the long jump and third in the triple jump. Number two and one, same with Jax. Number two, Ty Wickline, 1-0 over the past week. Complete game, seven-inning effort, and he got the win against Geneva. And number one, Mason Miller, .45 ERA, six innings, three hits, six Ks, and zero runs against. That's going to do it for this week for JSW. Stay tuned for next week for more of the world of Waynesburg sports. For Jack Hillgrove, I'm Hugh O'Neill. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.